Is your home router part of a botnet? It could be. There are thousands of home routers that are still vulnerable to tons of exploits. Raynoise has identified ongoing exploitation of Asus routers that are exposed to the internet. They are being used as operational relay boxes, as part of operational relay box networks for people that are doing cyberspace espionage. But before we dive into that, you know what's not being used in a botnet for cyber espionage? The sponsor of today's video. It's me. Yes, yes. Guys, I honestly believe that if you're a programmer trying to write fast, effective code, or you're a cybersecurity professional trying to stop your stuff from getting attacked, all of these require you to know the basic fundamentals of computers. My courses on the Level Academy teach you languages like C, networking in C, threading in C, assembly, and even a new installment, Rust, to learn the basics of how computers work. And Zero to Hero C programming will teach you the basics of the C programming language, the language that runs all other languages, and you can even learn a raise and see right now for free. Go check that lesson out. If you want to learn assembly, my arm load operations lesson is also free. And I also have a free three day C course that you can check out right here on the landing page. Guys, if you want to be a good programmer, you got to know the fundamentals. And where do you learn the fundamentals? On Low Level Academy. All right, guys, back to the video. See you there. What is an operational relay box, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Imagine you're a hacker, right? And you're over here and you're like, wow, look at me, I'm a hacker. And you draw a little smiley face and you have a great day. Okay, what if you want to hack this network over here? And this is the evil network, right? We're the, the bad guys we wanna hack into, very good. Okay, well, what you could do is you could just hack into them directly, right? Well, the problem with this is that bad guy would look at his logs and they would be like, oh my God. They would look at the guy and be like, wow, we got hacked by the guy at the IP address. 1.1.1.1. Can't have that. They would submit a complaint to the FBI and then you'd be all upset. Well, what you could do is hack a bunch of Asus routers on the internet and create kind of this weird mesh network. And then when you want to go out and do your hacking, first you jump through this one, and then you jump through this one, and then you jump through these guys, and you jump through this guy, and then you hit the evil company, right? And so what ends up happening is like, yeah, your IP address to this router looks like 1.1.1.1, but to the actual bad guys, you come off as 4.3.2. You know, I'm, I'm making up these IP addresses, but this is what is being done to these Asus routers. They're being used as a relay network for APTs, and your home router could be one of them. The National Cybersecurity Center from the Netherlands says that basically, Operational relay box networks are the modern version of botnets. The principle has been around for much longer. The way that they work is they're networks that are like a maze that is continuously reconfiguring with the entrance and the exit disappearing from the maze every 60 to 90 days. So these ACES routers are being taken over to create this maze so that people can't detect where the attacks are actually coming from. And apparently this has been a tactic that has been used uh, by China for a very long time. Yeah, digital espionage campaigns, especially in China. I think they said that Salt Typhoon, the intrusion set that's been caught hacking into the US power grid and the US telecom providers has been using these operational relay box network. The exploitation of the routers is trivial in and of itself, but the end state is what gets scary. What I find so insane about these vulnerabilities that are being attacked is that they're not even novel, right? Somehow over the course of like 30 years, Soho router manufacturers have not been able to get firmware security or software security right in any sense of or, or form or fashion, right? Memory corruption vulnerabilities are going to happen in languages like C, for example, right? Those I can kind of, I guess, bless a little bit better or I can kind of like justify it. I'm like, okay, it's really hard to write a big code base in C without vulnerabilities. Use after freeze happen, you know, they're not great but I understand it. We are in 2025 and we are still getting OS command injection vulnerabilities. A command injection is this unforgivable bug in software where literally because you don't sanitize user input for some reason, you give them the ability to run commands as the user that is running the program. I wrote up this cute little example. It's just, it's so silly. Okay. So let's say, for example, we have this program where we print out, what is your name? And we read in to a buffer the name of that user. And look, we're even doing bounds checking in a scanf string read. Wow, we are beasts. We are safe programmers. That's awesome. And then we even copy that name into the echo your name is percent %s buffer to echo the name back to them. Your name is Steve. And we're even using the n variant of sn printf to not copy too big of a buffer. No buffer overflows here. We can only write size of command buffer bytes. 
We probably should do size of command buffer minus one to keep the null terminator there. Not really that important. And then we run system on that command to echo their name back to them. Wow. But what if instead I said, hey, um, my name is Steve, but also we're going to add another command LS and then we're going to do another command with your empty quote. So your name is Steve. Also, by the way, command command dot C, which is just the local, you know, the version the, the files that I'm running with this program, right? So we're talking like trivial level exploitation. The reason that these vulnerabilities are so good for hackers is that there's no knowledge required of the memory map to exploit these, right? When you do a buffer overflow attack, you need to know the memory map of the process. Cat proc self mem. So what happens here? Okay, not mem. Uh, sorry, maps. When you have a process in Linux, because the kernel is trying to make the processes more secure, it randomizes all the maps for that process, right? We have user bin cat, which is a program that we ran. These are all of the maps, the memory pages that are allocated for that process. And one of them or several of them are just mapped pages that are the binary itself, right? The program cat. And you'll see if I run this, you can see that the addresses are randomizing, right? This is called ASLR, address space layout randomization. If I don't have a memory leak to pull this information out of the binary when I'm exploiting it at runtime, I can't do anything in the buffer overflow provided that there aren't like certain primitives in place. But with a command injection, right, with my little command, I can just be like, la 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 la. And then like, I just, that's it, I win. It's very, it's just, it's unforgivable. What's even more confusing about this is that this is a vulnerability in the HTTP server on the router, which by default, I'm pretty sure when they ship is a LAN side service. So when you buy a router, right, what you're literally doing is putting a, basically a device in between the internet and yourself. You can think of that as the LAN, the local area network and the WAN, the wide area network. And again, very simply, here's like your, your border or your firewall. And you have over here is your LAN and over here is your WAN. I will type this out to make it as obvious as possible, LAN and WAN. And inside of the device, a lot of these routers by default won't expose certain services to the outside. The reason being, this is the internet, right? You can probably just assume that all of the traffic that's inbound, that's not already pre-established, right? I don't want people to be able to access services on my router from the internet because I don't know what vulnerabilities are lurking there, right? But according to this vulnerability write up, like basically these routers are either being shipped with or being enabled like just for fun. They're putting the TCP server on the outside and they're enabling what is called remote management, which if you have a Soho router, please God, don't, don't ever enable the remote management capabilities on these routers. I have yet to see a Soho router where I look at the firmware doing like an audit and I'm like, oh wow, it's good. I trust this. Like I've literally never had that experience. So do me a favor. If you do have a Soho router, don't don't put your, your remote management on. Keep all of the services internal, man. Like all like TCP port 80, 443, I'm talking. You got the SSH, don't expose that either. Port 22, just keep it all on the inside because when you expose a service like this, you, what you're literally doing is saying, hey man, I trust the manufacturer to make this code good and surely it will handle any input from external users properly and not crash or have command injection vulnerabilities because that would be crazy. And so ultimately Gray Noise detected that there is a campaign of routers that were being attacked and they were installing a, uh, a backdoor SSH daemon that would wait for this public key, SSH RSA, you know, quad A, blah, 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 blah. This is a fingerprint here on TCP port 53282. And apparently the connections were originating from these four IP addresses here. Those are your IOCs. And yes, after this bug came out, you know, there was a patch that was released by Asus to remediate the CVE. But I mean, when is the last time that you have patched your home router? The answer should be the last time a patch came out. But unfortunately, for a lot of people around the world, that is not necessarily the case. And then obviously, Asus came out and said, uh, in response to recent media reports regarding attempts to exploit vulnerabilities in Asus routers, Asus would like to communicate that these vulnerabilities can be fixed. While some have noted that a firmware update alone may not completely address the issue, Asus would like to emphasize the following recommendations, including updating to the latest firmware, performing a factory reset, and setting strong administrator passwords to effectively restore and maintain device security. Here, here's my thing, dude. When a device has been compromised in this way, where someone has root access on an embedded device, 
If you are not completely from the beginning of the memory map to the end of the memory map, deleting all of the code, all of the data in there, and flashing a new firmware, you have no idea how far the compromise goes. It could be that the bootloader is hooked, it could be that the firmware sits somewhere in NVRAM and waits for something else to come up after a firmware update. Like there is so much evil crap you could do where just flashing a latest firmware makes no guarantees that the actor isn't still on your device. Obviously their SSH daemon may be gone because it's in like the root file system or something that gets flashed on a firmware update, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you completely clear it out and it could be dormant somewhere else. So my recommendations, obviously have a strong password, update your routers, turn off remote management, dude. It's just, I don't understand how that's still a feature. Okay, anyway, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. If you like these videos, give me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, give me a little kiss on the cheek. Don't do that, I'm happily married. And then go check this video out that I think you will like just as much. We'll see you there, goodbye.